Thundering across the stars to save the universe from the monster minds. Wheeled warriors explode into battle. Lightning strikes. We're live. Greetings and salutations. I'm Jody from Gen X Toys Geek. And I'm Chris from Chasing 80s Toys. And on today's episode, we're talking about one of our favorite, most cherished franchises from the 80s, Jace and the Wheeled Warriors. But before we start chatting about that, I want to uh, take this moment to thank everybody in our live chat audience who turned up today. Thank you so much for being here. So yeah, thank you all. Welcome, welcome. Uh, so Chris, Wild Warriors. Uh, how did you get introduced to Wild Warriors? Um, it must have been somewhere in the mid '80s that we got Wild Warriors uh, in the Netherlands on uh, TV, and I think I saw it first on Saturday morning TV Sky Channel, a program called Fun Factory. You know it, and that's when I saw that cartoon, and I think. The moment that intro song started and uh, mm -hmm. the, the cool animation and those monster mind vehicles, you know, with the plants that that had some that did something to my child's brain. And yeah, it's beautiful, beautiful. So yeah, I loved it. And not long after that, I found some of the toys in one of the toy stores in my area. And I, I bought one of those toys and yeah, there was something magically about this toy line that we didn't see with any of the other big franchises from the 80s. Uh, how was that for you, Jody? Yeah, same thing. I got, uh, re got really hooked on the cartoons during Saturday morning uh, cartoons, as you said, on Fun Factory Sky Channel. I can't recollect ever seeing the toys, though, in the toy store. So um, it's funny that you say that because I've never seen them in toy stores. Mm. Uh, either that or my memory is just too fuzzy. But I really can't remember that. Uh, I only got to know that there were toys uh, as yeah, as an adult. And uh, mm. guess where I found out there were toys of one of our favorite YouTube channels that gets me hooked on many, many toys lines. <laughs> wonder which one that would be you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder which one. <laughs> oh, so many cool people in the chat. Wow, I see all these names popping up. <laughs> Thanks again so much for being here uh, in, in great numbers. Awesome. Um, yeah, I think it was a store called Spillbone in the Netherlands. Uh, we had Intertoys and we had Spillbone in the Netherlands. And oh, I got some disturbance coming from your end. Yes. I'm glitching, sorry. Glitching must be the monster mind. Um, but anybody in the chat, feel free to share if you remember seeing these toys in the toy stores near where you lived or grew up in the 80s. Um, uh, uh, I remember there was a big shelf with masks. Below that was another big toy line. I think that was G.I. Joe that they had. And there was only one shelf with two rows of those boxes of Wheeled Warriors toys, and I think there were about five vehicles, and uh, the one I got, well, we'll, we'll talk about the one I got later when we talk about the toys, but there wasn't much, and I remember the second time I went into that toy store, there was none there, so I don't think it was very successful, the franchise at all. Uh, what's your idea about that? Yeah, it's, it's also really, really sad that... Uh... That the toy line and both the toy line and the cartoon they, they got cancelled way too soon in my opinion. Uh, we really never got a closure to the cartoon, mm -hmm. and indeed the the toys. I don't know if, if why they weren't successful because uh, the space age vehicles they they look pretty awesome. Um, but I'll talk about toys in uh, in a bit and uh, cool. Tell some more about the details uh, about the toys. Yeah, we're going to chat about it. We got Santara with a memory from KO Cruiser caught my eye for some reason. Must have asked it for Christmas. My parents got it for me as well as Armed Force, a Spike Strike. Cool. But since uh, I didn't like cars, I didn't play with them a lot. <laughs> Uh, 
Sorry about that. I'm having some glitching here. Yeah, yeah. Well, hope we can fix that. Um, for everybody in the chat, we're going to talk about mainly two big chapters. Uh, of course, there was the cartoon, there were the toys, but we're also going to throw a little bit of comics in there because there also were a few comics, mini comics of the line. And, well, we're going to chat about that. But first of all, for those in the chat who don't know the story or don't know this cartoon, um, it is one of the most awesome intro songs ever from the 80s cartoons, at least, I think. Uh, mm -hmm. Made by Shuki Levy and Haim Chabon, the same who did Mask, uh, Inspector Gadgets, and so many of those 80s franchises, they were responsible for this cool intro. Uh, well, you just heard it in our intro, right? We did a little bit of that. Um, yeah, it's pretty cool. It's all about Jay searching for his father. Uh, and um, here we see Jay and his father. And it goes something like this, thundering across the stars to save the universe from the monster mines. Jay searches for his father to unite the magic roots and lead his lightning league to victory over the changing form of Saw Boss. Wild warriors explode into battle. Lightning strikes. <laughs> How is that? <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Well, we can see uh, Sawboss. Uh, we actually don't see Sawboss uh, transform that much. It's it's mostly uh, his other minions that transform. Uh, but uh, the transformation scene they did was actually pretty amazing. And uh, uh, we have a little clip about that. Awesome. <laughs> and uh, such pretty vehicles, such pretty toys, but we're gonna chat about that in a in a moment. <laughs> the cartoon. They're, they're, they're yes. pretty well indeed they're pretty well designed. Um the, the cartoon took a bit of a bit of an artistic approach uh to the vehicles, improving some of the designs. Uh that that's what I actually fell in love with, the vehicles from the cartoon. Yeah, thank you, Michael. Thank you, my friend. <laughs> I, I tried. I, I did my best. <laughs> so, uh, speaking of the cartoon, what, what spoke to you the most of the cartoon? The cartoon, um, like I said, there was something in my child brain about these vehicles with plants attached to him, to it, that, that that sparked something with me. You didn't see that anywhere else. So that concept was really cool. And then the vehicles of the good guys. A spike strike, drill sergeant, armed force. There was something special about that. And I think that the main character, and we're going to uh, go into the characters uh, a little bit more when we chat about the cartoon, Jace. He's such a, he, he looks like he could have been a member of Duran Duran. And for those who don't know what I'm talking about, you'll soon see what I mean. What, yeah, what was it? Uh... What was it for yeah, you, Jody? The, 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 the intro song was just mind-blowing. It was actually really, really well animated with very, mm. very little animation errors. Um, the, the, like I said, I'm a vehicle guy more more than a, a, a character guy, but I, I just love the Space Age vehicles. Mm. Uh, not so fond of the two walkers, though, but uh, well be it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's... It's a bit of a weird show, though, because, yeah, you have technology and mixed with plans and mixed with a whole lot of magic. <laughs> it, it, yeah, sorcery, uh, science, it's, yeah, some of the ingredients we get with the Masters of the Universe we got with Wheels Warriors, too, you know, and it, 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 for me, it worked as a kid. <laughs> we, <laughs> yeah, I just mass shifted, Michael. <laughs> Yeah, for for to be exact, the car, the cartoon was released in uh, 1985 by uh, Dick Entertainment uh, together with ICC TV uh, Productions. Uh, it ran for only one season. That's all we got: 65 episodes. Um, the toy line uh, was out before that, I believe. Uh, uh, 
Yep. So the first were toys, then the cartoon, like with Masters of the Universe, I suppose, you know, and um, yeah, great animation. I believe it was a French animation team together with Japanese animation team uh, that worked on it. So you get a little bit of that anime vibe going in the cartoon. Mm -hmm. if you know what I mean? Uh, yep. Uh, yeah, it worked. It worked. It worked very well in the landscape. But still, I don't know how you feel about it, Jody. Still, I think Wild Warriors is one of the underdogs of the 80s. It is. It is definitely, definitely, definitely. You, of course, have the big three, and then the Mask is pretty popular, but it's, even Mask is not as big as like Transformers or Motu or G.I. Joe. But yeah, the, Jason the Wild Warrior is definitely, definitely an underdog. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, thanks for uh, adding that information. Uh, thanks, Sunny Fresh. Yeah, it was a French uh, studio. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> the animation background. Thanks, Toy Connections. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Um, well, shall we introduce to uh, everybody in the audience uh, the cast of uh, the Wild Warriors in at least in the cartoon. Yep, definitely, definitely. All right. Um, well, Jody and I have been uh, working the couple of uh, last weeks to get some uh, videos edited and uh, some other files edited to show you what it all was about. And every story needs a hero. And in Wild Warriors, it's the young Jace. And here's a short video fragment to show you uh, some of Jace's moments in the cartoon. Wherever you are, Father, I will find you. find you father wherever you are because like that space lightning we're unstoppable we're the lightning lead ring of light magic might <laughs> young young lad jace or uh, as he uh, everybody likes to refer him my boy my boy yeah uh, but bo a born leader definitely uh, definitely a born leader reckless uh, I wouldn't call him that reckless. Uh, you think he's reckless? Yeah, a bit. Sometimes he goes in without thinking, and of course, there are the members of the team to to you know bring the wisdom. Sometimes he it's more action than than and and getting himself in some troubles. You know, he's young, after all, mm -hmm. and uh, and you know, put in this this position to lead this band of uh, good heroes, the Lightning League. So that's a big responsibility that's put on his shoulder. But yeah, yeah definitely, I, definitely, definitely. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Herc doesn't always agree with him going into action. And uh, <laughs> uh, he's got a very big heart. So he basically wants to save the entire universe, right? Yeah, he's, he's definitely the good guy with a good moral gun for him, you know, want to do the right thing at all times. Uh, and uh, and yeah, he's always searching for his father. That's what what the story is about, right? After yep, in every episode, he's he's, he's got some really nice companions, and he's uh, he's probably got the, a dead figure with him, uh, Mr. Gillian. Yeah, let's uh, show you some uh, some video footage that we prepared of you of uh, the 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 wise man in the group of heroes, Gillian. Here he is. Mm -hmm. there was a small band of heroes who guided us to victory in desperate times. They were called the Lightning League. Their leader wore this ring. It is time for the knowledge of the past to save the future. The Lightning League is now reborn. This vehicle armed force I made for your father. Learn to use it well. It's yours now. Yes, yes, soon. So glad to see you both. But but we must hurry. <laughs> yes, we must get on with the show. And you're right, Pete. He has some sort of D and D feel to him. The wizard of uh, the couple and uh, 
Yeah. How do you remember Gillian from the cartoon? Uh, yeah, it's, he's, he's the wise old wizard. Um, what I've noticed is sometimes like he's a super powerful wizard. Mm -hmm. So sometimes his magic is amazing. Uh, sometimes he has a bit of a feeling that I get also with uh, the wizard from the gummy bears. Like <laughs> bungling spells, spells half, only half work. Uh, you drive out of his range and the magic fades away. <laughs> gummy bear, that's a good, that's a good comparison. Yes, right you are my boy. <laughs> Yeah, he's that great character and that outfit with that crazy hat. That's one of the things I remember from the 80s as a kid, you know, that, that, that mm -hmm. he's one of the strong characters that, that was still with me. Definitely. <laughs> like, yeah, true. MC DJ, CDC, uh, like Dungeon Master from Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> Uh, another cartoon which uh, has a big discrepancy or a big disconnect with the toy line. Uh, but we'll talk about that uh, disconnect uh, in a bit. <laughs> yeah, cool. Um, there's, of course, also a young one on the team, you know. Mask has Scott and T-Bob. Um, Thundercats had Snarf. And uh, Wild Warriors had uh, Flora and her flying fish. And here's a little bit about of uh, Flora. <laughs> Don't you think I'd tell you? All right, I won't be nasty, but I wish Jason wouldn't treat me like I was a nerd. Ooh, ooh, he's coming. If only the lamps really were a magic. I heard that. Come on, you two. We're all in this together. Okay, I'm sorry, Un. <laughs> she she couldn't feel with that power when the monster minds were approaching because part of Flora is that she's also half plant, right? Or yes, she's uh, she's uh, she was created uh, from a plant uh, by Audric, mm. uh, and indeed, hence has some magical feelings, can talk to plants, uh, can sense. Also, other people, she can sense the lightning leak, she can sense a bit of magic. Uh, um, good heart, very big heart, always wants to help. Uh, sometimes gets herself into trouble due mm -hmm. to that. Um, has a couple of pets that she took on board. Uh, so not only Brock, the, the flying fish, yeah. uh, or as Herc like to say, uh, you overgrown tuna. Uh, and then her little robot pets, the Zoggies. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Awesome, yeah. Butterfly koi, <laughs> flying fish. <laughs> yeah, definitely. But definitely a cool character on the show. It uh, makes up. It's a good team. Yeah, it's definitely a good team. Yeah. Um, uh, but you, you, you said you, you called uh, or you um, ref uh, referred uh, or referenced uh, the Thundercats. Uh, to Flora like Snarf, but I think uh, there's a different character who's way more Snarf-horrific than uh, Yes, you're right, Flora. you're right, you're right. We're talking about Oon, the little, yeah, what is he? He's, uh, he's not a robot, he, he's, he's a sort of magic armor, uh, a squire to Odric, and later to Jace. And uh, he assists him very bravely, so I, yeah, I would like to refer to him as Brave Sir Oon. And here are some of uh, Oon's moments uh, moments on the cartoon. Whoa! And I shall serve my new master faithfully, me and my magic lamp. You know what's wrong with you, Scrap Heap? Your unreasoning fear of can openers. But I don't have a fear of can openers. You will when I get done with you. Yay! <laughs> brave Sir Oon. <laughs> well, he wasn't always that brave. Uh, he preferred to uh, avoid battles when possible, but when needed, he's yeah, he's the, always there for the team. Yeah, yeah, believing and, uh, that with his lands. magic lance. Uh, have you ever seen the Lance do any actual magic? Um, there are episodes 
uh, where Un believes that the lens does do magic things and therefore winning the day. But I think that's uh, something open for discussion if the lens was actually any magic at all. <laughs> The only time I saw uh, it perform a magic trick when it uh, fit into uh, the the pipe of a vacuum cleaner. Uh, <laughs> I believe that's uh, part of your favorite episode, isn't it? Yeah, that's one of my uh, well favorite episodes. Uh, there is this episode called Doom Flower. I think it's episode thirty or thirty-five, so somewhere halfway the season, 30. and they have to go into uh, a disguise. And uh, shall we talk about that now? The disguise, the how well the Lightning Link was able to disguise themselves, and and Un uh, was disguised as a, a working robot, so they can sneak on board of a ship to to spy around and look for traces of Audric, Jace's father. And here is some. Uh, let me see where I have that video for you. Uh, here it is, the perfect disguise for Jace and Un. Let's start with Jace. Good job, Gillian. I'd never recognize armed force. And as for you... Well, I wondered what color that would make your hair. Now that's a great what disguise. A great right? disguise. <laughs> you change the color of your hair and you change your color of your outfit. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing disguise. I would have never recognized him. I would have never recognized that from Doomflower. And of course, now we get to Un's disguise. You've just seen him in a previous clip. This is uh, what they came up with for Un. And uh, he likes that disguise a lot, I believe. Master, do I have to look like a robot? <laughs> <sighs> oh, I don't know, Un. I think it's an improvement. Oh! Who's that? Uh, just a cleaning robot. Come on. <laughs> it worked. <laughs> Possibly the first Roomba? The first robotic <laughs> vacuum cleaner? <laughs> yeah, definitely, but yeah. I <laughs> oh, love it, Centaro. Where did Jace go? <laughs> There's definitely a lot of humor in the cartoon when you watch, when you watch it back. I, I don't know if I thought it was really that funny as a kid. I was more like, oh, this is very exciting where they're going, all these planets and all these worlds. But <laughs> there's definitely a whiff of humor over the cartoon right now. <laughs> I, I, found, I found his name pretty funny because Un, uh, mm -hmm. if you pronounce it or uh, in Dutch, kind of different spelling, it actually means dummy. Yeah. <laughs> what, what I've also noticed that, like in uh, especially in the latter half of the series, that he he's constantly falling into bits. Poor little Un. Yeah, falling apart, and then uh, Jace or uh, Gillian uh, put them together again. When Humpty Dumpty break his neck, uh, well, they, you put them together again. <laughs> yeah, but um, you you have to kind of pity him because he's always teased by the pirates of the crew, Herc. Yeah, Herc Storm Sailor, the, the guy who's in it for the money. But at the end of the day, there's a hero in him too, right? <laughs> let's, let's show some of Herc's moments on the cartoon. You just had to break down on me again, didn't you? Uh, sorry about plowing up your tomato patch, folks. But don't expect me to pay for it. Isn't that the prettiest sight of the universe? <laughs> Would I be right to compare him a bit with uh, this fellow over here from another universe far, yeah, far away? He's, he's definitely a Han Solo uh, inspired he is, right? figure. Yep. And indeed, uh, he, all he wants is money, and that gets the team into trouble from time to time. Uh, although he got a big pile of gold, uh, turned out to be only lead, but he mm -hmm. got a big pile of it. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, good point, uh, Daniel. There is a, a DVD set or a two DVD sets uh, to get at least those episodes on DVD. And if you in the chat would like to take a look after this live stream uh, and, and taste a bit of that Wild Warriors adventure, all episodes are widely available on YouTube as well and quite decent quality. So be sure to check it out if you like to. Well, it's a good thing that Daniel mentioned the DVD set. So uh, I actually have volume two over here. Uh, I have volume in the house as well. Uh, yeah, it's a bit transparent uh, <laughs> due to the green screen. Uh, but it was kind of like uh, touch and go if we would actually got volume two. Because what they did is on volume one, it's only 33 of the 65 episodes. Mm. And the volume one got released in 2008 and after 2008 it's way it was playing the waiting game mm -hmm. uh, waiting 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 will we get volume two uh, there was there was speak uh, speak that it might get cancelled it might not yeah. get made but luckily thank god five years later in 2013 we got volume two at last <laughs> you get it yeah it's great <laughs> Uh, yeah. How is that so, Rebel Wookie? The complete series DVD is still cheap. Big hardware store. Ah, cool. Yeah, you can you can still get it. It's still available if you go on uh, eBay as well. I can imagine. And uh, the stuff, the, the the toys are more expensive because uh, yeah, not many toys were produced. We get to that later in the show. But uh, the, the cartoon, yeah, you can get the DVD box for it. Decent prize, I suppose. I haven't, I haven't looked recently what they're, they're going for. Um, but after I got volume two, uh, they're definitely out of print, so you definitely have to go onto eBay to get them. Yes, yeah, so some people are agreeing with us. Uh, yeah, Rook was uh, Han Solo, says Daniel, and uh, very roguish that Rook says uh, our good friend Scuba Pete. <laughs> So let's talk about the villains of the show. Yeah, of course. You have your heroes, but uh, yeah, wh where would the heroes be without uh, a set of bad guys? And let's uh, show the leader of the bad guys first and then his minion. Uh, he's called Saw Boss, and uh, he's very evil. Here are some of his moments of uh, the cartoon. Go after him. So yeah. according to Rebel Wookie, there's actually uh, been a recent re-release of the whole series in one box. Uh, ah, cool. Thank you for that, uh, Rebel Wookie. Uh, I'm definitely going to have to look that one up. Definitely. I got a question for you, Jody. Where would you rank Saw Boss compared with other big villains from the 80s, like Prime Evil, Skeletor, uh, Mumra, Cobra Commander, Megatron, uh, what have you. How would you rank him? Uh, that's a very good question, buddy. That's a very good question. Uh, he's definitely very, very powerful with the, the magic of the black light. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. He can transform into a monstrous vehicle with a big saw blade. Uh, he is very powerful. He's definitely... Uh, I think he's a... Better evil guy uh, than, uh, say, like Cobra Commander. Um, Megatron and him will be <laughs> on par, I think. Uh, yeah. Then again, Megatron can uh, only transform into a gun and is always reliant on uh, Starscream or Soundwave to hold him. Uh, so definitely, yeah, Soul Boss is, is much more mobile. That's a good point. 
because a lot of the cartoons you have, uh, you know, Cobra Commander, uh, Megatron has Starscream as a sidekick. A lot of evil guys has sidekicks, but you know, but the Monster Minds is just Saw Boss, and then he has a lot of Monster Minds. And in a few of the episodes, uh, you see him teleport or at least transmit himself. You see his face on this guy, you know, uh, giving him orders, and then this vehicle becomes sort of the Saw Boss, rolling into action, but. Most of the time, he stays behind in his safely base, uh, giving the orders from, uh, you know, from there. And the the base does he does he actually? Because um, yeah, especially like in in the intro, but even uh, in some of the episodes of the cartoon, you actually see him transform into his uh, into his into his vehicle mode. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, although most of those. Uh, most of those uh, saw troopers, uh, they they actually get destroyed. Although there's one episode where he's definitely, definitely on in the field with his minions, mm. uh, and, and that's actually one of my favorite uh, episodes. Cool. We're gonna get to that in a bit. Uh, before we do that, uh, there is the headquarters. The the Snake Mountain of Saw Boss is this space laboratory which first belonged to the good guys it was Audric's laboratory yeah. uh, you know something went wrong and then the monster minds were created and took over that base and they teleport that base from planet to planet from world to world always trying to make life as bad as they can and trying to defeat the lightning league and here are some clips of that base uh, transporting over over all over the galaxy Powers of the Black Light, take me to the planet Vicon. Powers of the Black Light, remove me from here. I will conquer the boy another time. That's how you do it. What a base he has. It's humongous. And yeah, as you said, it used to be Audric's lab. Um, it's amazing that he's able to transport that whole thing uh, anywhere he would like. Well, anywhere he would like. He's, he has a bit of a weakness, though, with that transportation because he always needs some kind of pillars or base uh, to actually to be able to transport them. That's how he does it. Yeah, that's how he does it. Uh, maybe it's good to go back a little bit uh due to some uh, questions in the in the comment i just saw I, I lost it now where it was but it's about the origins of the bad guys uh audric uh jace's father is working in his laboratory to find this cure or this special uh, this special plant which has special he, good he powers wanted to make uh, he wanted to make i believe a plant that uh, could help feed everybody right yeah yeah to feed everybody then this weird space phenomenon happens which corrupts his experiment and all these plants suddenly evolve into these angry monster minds you know and jay says in that episode the monster minds are ruthless and that's true that the plants become ruthless and step out of their pots and and change into these monsters and then into these vehicles too and that's how they originated and the only thing on their mind is is conquer the universe and defeat the lightning leap because they're obviously in their way so that's that's uh, i think that sums up the origins of the monster minds uh, a bit right yep uh sunny phrase you're actually right uh, i had the same feeling <laughs> with uh, the headquarters uh, a real technodrome vibe to it uh, you're completely right there that's a good one yeah um you were talking about one of your favorite episodes and uh, some moments you'd like to share about that jody yeah, so definitely one of my favorite episodes was uh, Dreamworld. And uh, like you brought some clips from Doomflower, I also brought some clips. Uh, so um, be aware that some of these will contain some spoilers. 
Hey, Jace, I got a surprise for you. Father! Master Audric! Bathing the roots in protomatter radiation will accelerate the grafting process. In a few minutes, we need never fear Sawboss again. So the plot <laughs> of this episode is they get to Dreamworld, and in Dreamworld, almost everything is possible indeed. And finally, uh, he got a few moments close to his father. Uh, but in this episode, he actually meets his father, and they are about to, they were are finally able to combine the roots. Mm -hmm. But will they? Uh, and for anybody who doesn't want to see spoilers, uh, I suggest you well, look at the other way for about two to three minutes, because definitely some spoilers ahead. <laughs> What a way to so go. They lose the roots. <laughs> they lose Audric. And it even gets worse because they lose all the vehicles. And mm -hmm. at the end, it's only the crew and Sawball. I won't give up. Ring of light, magic might. No, no, this cannot be. Amazing. And of course, in the end, magic will save the day. But that yeah, ring. they finally that defeated Sawboss, did they? Well, it's only episode 48 out of 65. So uh, <laughs> maybe the title of the episode, Dream World, might give you a clue what happens afterwards. Yeah, definitely. That ring, ring of light, it's like Spectrum that Matt Tracker uses. You know, he can do everything with that ring. Yeah, he can even transport the barge from a planet back into space. Amazing, yeah, yeah. And the barge, uh, that's the big ship, the pride of the skies, that Rockstorm sailor pilots. You've seen it in the intro, that big spaceship with the, with the solar sails on top of it. Iconic vehicle too, yeah. Awesome. <laughs> well, besides toys and besides the cartoon, there was some more media. There definitely was some uh, more media, I believe. Uh, so, yeah, with... I think you're going to refer to the, the comics. Uh, with, with every toy vehicle uh, came a mini comic. And here's one for good size for you. And this is before the cartoon. So the story is totally different. The, 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 the pilots who drive the vehicles are referred to as the drivers of them. I don't even think that Jace is called Jace in, that, in this cartoon. He doesn't even look like it. No, the, the, these guys, the, they didn't have any names. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're human. That, that much uh, you can tell from it, but that's it. <laughs> yeah, and it was kind of also the, these mini comics were kind of also the instructions. And it's it's one of the few remaining sources. Uh, well, there are some nowadays online, uh, but what was actually included in inside the box? 
And uh, we uh, we got one comic for each of the, the vehicles. So uh, one with armed force, uh, one with drill sergeants, where drill sergeants uh, is basically the, the topic of the com in the comic. Um, we got one with uh, this guy, Quick Draw. Mm. Uh, Spike Trike. Spike Trike. Uh, Sawballs, of course. KO Cruiser. Uh, Gun Grinner, and unfortunately, I can't find the one from uh, Terror Tank anymore. But there was a, a, actually another comic, uh, Chris, and this comic was after the television show. In the He Man and the Masters of the Universe magazine, uh, actually, in two uh, copies of these, they actually included a four page comic. Hmm. Uh, the first in the fall of 1985. Uh, wow. Where you can actually see that we finally see Jace in uh, media outside of uh, the cartoon. Yeah, cool. And another one in the winter of 1986. And uh, the funny thing about the 1986 is they actually refer to the stack and attack feature of the toys. Uh, yeah. Which I'll uh, quickly address uh, later on in, the, in this live stream. <laughs> Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Okay, okay. Do you have a favorite vehicle from the good guys and the bad guys? Um, I'm gonna kind of be boring, and I would definitely say uh, armed force. Definitely armed force. Yeah. Definitely armed force. Um, for the bad guys, for the monster mines, uh, I kind of like uh, Ku cruisers. Some somehow has a vibe to me, and. I think I had, when I was a young kid, I had a little toy that it looked like the, the truck form of a KO Cruiser. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if it was a plastic toy or was something made of Duplo or something, but I somehow have an emotional bond with uh, with KO Cruiser. Yeah, the cool vehicles. Yeah, I would say mine would be, for the good guys, Drill Sergeant. That, uh, that vehicle looks so aerodynamic and there's this big drill on top of it that it can use to almost drill to through every surface and for the bad guys it would go between this guy saw boss and uh gun grinner which was actually the first toy i bought i got back in the 80s but yeah uh, well i found that in the cartoon the uh, gun grinner is drawn often very very in a, a more comic style or more mm -hmm. cartoonish style and he's often like uh, the subject for uh yeah, weird puns and weird humor, like flying all about. Uh, they crash him, and although all the monster mines, mines get crashed, but he's kind of like uh, like the one that gets kicked at a lot in a, in, yeah. a, in a more com comedy style. I kind of like what they did with uh, the Dinobots in the Transformers the movie when Devastator stomped on. The, yeah, on stage. <laughs> That's a good comment, Kieran. A 13-page comic, even. Wow, nice. That would be the French, yeah, yeah. And Daniel says, uh, the stack and attack feature was their version of a Transformer combiner. Yeah, yeah, sort of. Uh, we, we're going to get to that with the toys, you know, that uh, there was definitely fun to be had with, uh, with these vehicles, especially if you have more than one, I suppose. But uh, before we uh, go into uh, the cartoons, uh, or in the, uh, sorry, into the toys, let's have a, we'll be right back after these messages. You can make the good guys better. Armed force, roll them! You can make the bad guys better. Stop us! Roll them into battle! Wheel, warriors, quick change and fighting machines. Bad guys approaching, quick stack and attack. You can stack and Wheel Warriors vehicles each sold separately. Some parts not for use with some toys. New from Mattel. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, awesome. And, and agreed with you, Slash Rum. Soundtrack of the cartoon was amazing. <laughs> parts of crazy Dutchie to the left hand side. <laughs> 
Yeah, it was. It was actually was a real great toy line uh, with uh, yeah a lot of play features. Yeah, the main play feature was of course the stack and attack, which I'll uh, I'll talk to in the talk about in a bit. But especially uh, each vehicle came with a lot of accessories, like multiple wheels you can swap out, multiple uh, guns you can swap uh, between the vehicles. Uh, so a lot of a lot of play value, a lot of play value. Yeah. Although um, I don't think that these toys are suitable for kids that are OCD. <laughs> because every little accessory only came in a single fold, so you could never mirror them. Uh, yeah. So, so this would be uh, very alarming to you to have this missile or rocket on this end and not having the same one on the other hand. And there's this radar disc, so he can watch his favorite TV programs on this side. And yeah. Well, I, I don't know if you can see, but uh, the, actually on my armed force, ah, yeah. I actually got a, an additional copy of uh, the little gray gun uh, to make it at least a little bit more cartoon accurate cool good that's a dedication what you did there yeah and, and like you can take it apart and switch this to this side and that's what i loved about the toys you know you can put a rocket up front here you know and and, and create your own custom vehicle and if you had more than one and i i always just had the one in the 80s uh, gun grinner that was the only one mm -hmm. i got um yeah but still i remember having a lot of fun with that one vehicle and then you know have it join in with my master of the universe adventures yeah so overall the toy line actually existed out of the four uh lightning league vehicles uh four monster mines two beast walkers and a, and a play set it was actually a pretty cool toy line uh, definitely they actually came in really nice boxes as well, I have to say. Uh, yeah. It kind of makes it hard because uh, if you, uh, uh, Michael from Retro Blessing did a really great video about the toy line and uh, how hard it is to actually find resources online uh, to get them complete. Because, yeah, they came with different, different uh, little accessories and there's no accessory alike. Well, the mold of the accessory are the same, but the, the colors, the, the, there's no two the same accessory. Like I said, this for my little armed force, I actually had to go onto eBay to get a, a, a second copy of the gun. Yeah the, yeah, the first vehicle we have, armed force. What are you feeling about armed force? cool it looks cool all those parts he looks very space uh i was into space lego a lot and and he could mm -hmm. fit right in there i i even now that you show this remember that since i only had the one vehicle i made my other wheeled warriors and lightning leagues vehicles out of lego so i could at least play those adventures yeah, it's, uh, it's kind of funny what they did. So uh, like with the mini comics, they actually included some box art, which you see in the top right corner. Uh, and I think that the box art was the biggest inspiration for the cartoon, uh, which you see uh, bottom left. Mm. Uh, there's some artistic liberties taken with the uh, the animation model of Arm Force, though. But he, I think he's one of the most accurate uh, to, the, uh, to the actual toy. Mm. But yeah, you see uh, the, the the gun positions are almost the same. Uh, uh, the only thing what they did is in the cartoon they took the, the little gray gun like I have uh, a duplicate of and mm -hmm. uh, a mine. Uh, they put them on each side. Uh, really, really cool vehicle. Uh, I was never fond of the missiles that they came with. It's uh, I kind of wish what they did is like uh, have the ability to have the missile removed from the post because now you're firing a missile with a big poster uh, mm -hmm. underneath it. Then we have Drill Sergeant. Um, nice little toy, the cartoon model is definitely a lot of artistic uh, liberties taken into it. So they actually make it uh, into a, yeah, a functional drill, uh, drill vehicle. Um, what's funny thing though, that this uh, Drill Sergeant actually came with a motor block, uh, but yeah, the motor block was never included, uh, or the engine <laughs> block was never included in the, in the cartoon model. That's cool. 
Um, well, you also see that there's always different kind of wheels come with uh, the vehicle. So each set comes with three different uh, set of wheels. So uh, yeah, try to combine those to make an actual uh, cartoon accurate uh, version. It's, it's not very possible. What's also kind of nice is that uh, almost each vehicle has a different uh, frame uh, that you come with. And uh, you can, like I said, I believe one of the main play features uh, which this was designed for was yeah the swappability of uh, moving around not only uh, guns uh, or weapons, uh, changing wheels, uh, changing frames. It's it's kind of like Lego blocks, right? So if you take it apart, you come up with a big pile of blocks, and you can use your own imagination. Yeah, that was always my dream: get as much vehicles as I could, and then you know uh, put them on a pal, and then create my own vehicles and switch the weapons and so. And and that switching of the weapons, that's a thing we saw in the cartoon too. That they took must have took from the toy line. You know, there's Jace riding in armed force, and he's like, "Quickly, Herc, give me that rocket launcher!" And then the rocket launcher from Drill Sergeant or another vehicle. Uh, magically transported from drill sergeant to armed force and then jay's had the rocket launcher and you know mm -hmm. that, that's yeah that's cool and then we have quick draw mm. uh, was what well, i found funny about quick draw that if you actually look at the uh the cartoon model uh versus the toy model they actually swapped some uh, some weapons because the, the big shields uh which is predominantly used in the, in the cartoon, like the shield pops up, it opens up, a gun comes mm -hmm. out. Uh, that's actually uh, toy wise. It was always in the front, never on the never on the back. Oh, mm -hmm. uh, really cool design. I, I love the the circular windows they put onto this. Yeah. And here you also see that the little two gray parts uh, you see there are actually frame extensions, so you can do even more playability with the frames and the more combinations. That's so cool, yeah. And we have Spike Trike. Um, Spike Trike is uh, actually the name is actually uh, it came from. It's supposed to have uh, only one of the tracks in front. Uh, but if you look at the little uh, the box art uh, top right, yeah. uh, you see it with two tracks, uh, the, two tracks. And, uh, uh, a lot of the pictures you find online are done with two tracks. But he's only supposed to have one track in front, not two. If you follow the cartoon yeah. and the name, Spike Trike, Trike, three, <laughs> not four. Look, look at the driver; he's so exposed for enemy fire. You know, there's nothing shielding him whatsoever. <laughs> That's true, and uh, even in the cartoon, this is the only vehicle that doesn't have windows. Because mm. uh, even uh, even Quick Draw uh, actually can close the windows. Uh, but yeah, if you're uh, if you're the lucky one, lucky to sit in Spike Trike, uh, yeah, be careful of getting shot at. Um, what you do may notice if you look at the cartoon model, the, this mm -hmm. actually has an engine block in the in the front, uh, which doesn't come with the toy. Um, I'm wondering if they actually took the engine block of uh, Drill Sergeant and put it on Spike Track. Could be, could be, yeah, definitely. That there's a question from Sunny. Uh, don't know if you can answer this. Uh, yeah, the, so indeed the, the armament, the weapons, especially if they're doing the stack and attack feature, they actually shoot uh, one weapon from one vehicle and they shoot it over to the next vehicle. I actually have a clip on that, uh, which I'll show in a, in a few minutes. Cool. And we have the Monster Mine, Sawbox. Yes. Uh, really sleek design, by the way. And... Uh, the way they did it in the in the vehicle mode, especially like with the wheels and the the tracks, uh, pretty amazing design. Uh, I think this was one of the easier to actually convert into a cartoon model. Mm -hmm. uh, the only bit of a shame is that um, you can't actually make the cartoon model because in the cartoon model he has an antenna always on the right side, and the only antenna that came with the set was the gold one, uh, which mm -hmm. you see in the bottom middle. Uh, which looks nothing like the antenna which of the cartoon model. So I have no clue where they came up with that antenna. But I do love this vehicle, though. I do love this vehicle. <laughs> A great comment from Dave from uh, Vintage Toy Rush. <laughs> One less uh, line to collect, but if I'm on eBay later, I'm blaming the crazy Dutchies. Yeah. 
You won't be disappointed, Dave. You won't be disappointed. Uh, but I definitely, before you do, I can definitely recommend to go to the Retro Blessing YouTube channel. He has a survival guide if you are a completist and you want them complete. Uh, Michael actually did a really good video on which articles and which accessories belong to which vehicle. So that's definitely highly recommended. Then it's actually in the description of this video. Mm. Your first toy. Gun yes. Runner. Uh, awesome. And what I also loved about these vehicles, like uh, Gun Grinner, and uh, even even with, uh, can I make my screen a bit bigger, Chris? Yes, uh, your screen. Let me yeah. see. Okay. Just hide the app and just click on me. Oh, you don't want to see this anymore. Your screen. Here you go. Okay. So what's nice that actually all of these little accessories, they actually have a lot of play value and I actually have gimmicks, they move. Like arm force, his claw uh, can go up and down. And then uh, in Gun Grinner, uh, the, the balls on the top actually rotate. Mm -hmm. um, saw Boss uh, actually has a ball joint on the saw. So you can actually rotate and move it up and down freely. Look at that shining. Look at that shining, Dave. You know you want this. You know you want oh, you, Yours is silver, right? It's uh, your, your blades. It's, it's, well, it's between it, gold and silver a bit, if I have to be honest. I think that the light... Is, mine is really golden. Yeah, this is somewhere in between. Oh, okay. Uh, it but, might be the camera that shows it up as pure, uh, more chrome. Because mine is actually really, really gold-like. So shiny. So shiny. So shiny. <laughs> Then we have KO Cruiser, or the KO Troopers. Funny little truck uh, with actually no roof. <laughs> um, I think in the in this one, they, they, they stray the furthest from the, the toy. Because um, if you look at the uh, KO Cruiser, is known for the, the, the big ball he always throws about. Mm. Um, uh, it's that one is actually huge compared to the toy one. Look at how tiny the little toy uh, ball is that goes uh, yeah. on top of KO Cruiser. And it's supposed to go on the back. Well, if you put it on the back, he can't hit anything. <laughs> like that? No, no, no. But he's this would be one that I would love to army build because in the cartoon, you've seen uh, most of the time you get one of those uh, saw boss vehicles with the saw blade in charge of, uh, you know, those terror tanks or a lot of KO troopers. The, yeah, this well, is for the, the muscle. This storyline definitely, uh, besides that they're bloody expensive nowadays, it, yeah, it's built at army building, the monster mines. Because, yeah, also in the cartoon, but even in the little comic, you see multiple versions of them. So it's definitely an army building toy line. Uh, but, mm. if, yeah, if you want to army build them nowadays, good luck with that, buddy. Definitely. Oh, this was the first one uh, Rebel Wookiee had. Yeah, that's a great one to have. Yeah. Do, do you still have it, Rebel Wookiee? Please uh, comment in the chat if you like. Like I said, I have a special, especially with the cartoon model of K.O. Cruz, I have an emotional bond with it. I have no idea where it came from. I think I had a toy that looked very, very similar to uh, the truck model, especially with the two little headlights sticking out left and right. And uh, he's, he's kind of a funny character, like that big grin on his face and that goofy eyes uh, yeah. left and right. Yeah, 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 definitely. The muscle, you know. And this was the mean one, Terror Tank. The Terror Tank. Uh, also, yeah, this one where the cartoon model is completely different than the toy. <laughs> Actually, completely different. Uh, flattened down. You, you can never, because, yeah, even, even if the toy, if you look into the top right in the little box art, he, the frame of the tank, uh, uh, the body of the tank actually sits up on, from the ground so high. Mm. You can't get a cartoon accurate version of this toy, not at all. But he looks great, and then the the the, the claw on top uh, again, mm. that little play feature where you can uh, open and uh, shut the mouth of uh, of Terror Tank. Yeah, awesome. I yeah, wonder yeah. how they came up with the cartoon model, because if you look in the cartoon model in the back, there's this there's this special gun uh, posted in there, and that gun doesn't exist an ex as an accessory for any of the vehicles. Yeah, he doesn't have that in every episode too, I believe. You don't see, but no, he does. That that uh, does the gun oh. on the back on the on the 
understand that that's that's available in all the cartoon models as far as i could see cool cool and oh cool to hear that you still have him uh rebel wookie awesome and terror tank was his second it's great you got more, more of them because when i go ask my friends uh were you know living in my area at that time none of them really had the toys or as far as i remember at my school nobody else really had wheeled warriors toys i think this was a matter of being into the sto toy stores in my area and then boom gone again and the same for cartoon it wasn't a lot uh, around very long yeah yeah i don't know why they were uh, they weren't around for that long and it's it's, it's kind of weird indeed hmm um those are the the vehicles and then we have the two walkers the big ones uh, trailblazer and beast walker yeah uh, awesome. i have no clue who came up with this design it's it's look at those legs of those two beasts <laughs> it's, it's such a ridiculous design it is uh, but hey the motorized yeah that i used to have this one uh later on again and i think i traded it with a friend later uh, which I still feel sorry for, but you can put one of these on the back of, you yeah. know, your Beast Walker or, you know, on, and yeah, they're that's, motorized. That's why, they come with this, that's why they come with this little ramp. And uh, yeah. again, the main feature of this, it's motorized. New from Mattel. Watch out, Beast Walker is coming. Can Trailblazer stop him? The ultimate battle coming soon. <laughs> it's such a weird design of a toy. Uh, even look at the face of beast walker it's 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 crazy yeah it is it's a bit mad oh look at that of course, battle, battle base. base wow uh i actually really really like this playset uh comes with tons of play features has a cockpit uh the doors open so the big doors became become ramps um if you look on the inside so you can fold it open there's this little crane although the crane doesn't move up and down hmm. um one of the weirdest features about this toy is that uh, actually you see that orange cage yeah so you can put that onto one of the sides of the the battle base and put one of the the, the little monster mind figures uh, you can put them in there in jail but, uh, <laughs> yep you can put them in jail so really 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 cool play set um really yeah. cool play feature uh hard to get complete um um i don't know if you can see it properly in uh on the left hand side you see this orange lever or lever yeah. um yeah. that's actually to flip the ramp open and when i got this toy that orange lever was actually missing and uh, good luck finding that one on ebay i've never yeah. been able to i can imagine but how cool to have this play set and you just post your your good guys in there or your bad guys around that use it as a center of the battlefield and it it folds open like a castle grayskull set or a, a ghostbusters hq from from one of the ghostbusters series that 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 was definitely a cool thing wow yeah, definitely different. Yeah. images and pictures don't do this base justice at all you can make the good guys better Lightning League Battle Base. You put it together. Wheel Warriors. Quick change and fighting machines. Enemy approaching. Prepare Battle Base. Launcher one loaded. Two loaded. Three loaded. You can stack, 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 and attack, stack, 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 stack with Wheel Warriors. Quick change and fighting machines. Lightning League Battle Base. Vehicles each sold separately. Some parts not for use with some toys. New from Mattel. Oh, I forgot even to say that as a turret. <laughs> oh, we got somebody loving this base. Would this be something you would go for, Pete? Now that you've seen all of this awesomeness, and there's they're expensive and they're hard to find complete, but they're not that many in the line. So, mm -hmm. that, that, yeah, this is cool. No, I was uh, I was actually able to find a, a, a mint in box uh, one for. <laughs> Not that it's too expensive, 150, 200 bucks. Oh, maybe? that's good. That's great. Yeah, yeah. And that's crazy commercials. Yeah. Tac, 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 tac. <laughs> awesome. So, and last of the existing toy lines are two action bags. Like, we didn't get enough accessories with the vehicles. You can get even more. Mm -hmm. Can't have enough wheels. It's not called wheel warrior for nothing. Although the wheels are the same that came with the vehicles, the guns, although the same molds, are of course different colors. 
Mm. Different color schemes. So that that gray missile is a, a, a lighter gray than came with uh, one of the toys. Mm. They yeah. were planning to do more, though. Yeah. Um, they were planning to do four more: uh, spray gunner, fling shot, and you actually do see this even early on in the cartoon. Because I believe in like in episode three, you already see fling shot. Mm. But they did include uh, these vehicles in the cartoon. Although uh, there are some discrepancies between, again, the toys and the cartoon. Because uh, according to this picture, uh, the top right uh, monster mind is called Grim Creeper. Although mm -hmm. in the show they call it Lurchers. And Brutus only gets called Brutus uh, in episode 51. Because uh, uh, before that they always call it Flapjack. Mm. But yeah, speaking of uh, discrepancies between toys and cartoon. So with all these toys, where's Jace? All we got <laughs> is these little guys. All right, I'm going to put you on the big screen because we can't see him. He's too small. Where? Yeah. So we got these little brown dudes and most with a tie. Mine doesn't even have a tie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're, 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 they're... Where did Jace came from? Um, Retro Blasting actually had a really funny sketch about it, and I actually took a 10 second clip of that. You got the toys, but you don't got the characters. All right, so we give these characters, these guys, some names Jace and the Wheeled Warriors. <laughs> they did, were planning some uh, figures, though, uh, or at least they were in prototype stage. Um, so they yeah. were planning to actually release the, the the Lightning League as we know from the cartoon as a toy line. But I don't know who came up with this design. Look at this design. This must have been prototypes, yeah. Because so here they are compared to the actual figures. Uh, like Flora is even <laughs> her hands are always in this pose. Yeah. Only the legs are articulated. Um I don't. I don't even think I would actually buy this. this no, I think this must. Ridiculous. This is work in progress. It must have been. If if they would have put this set out on the shelves, uh, and we determined nobody will buy this. No, the, the series already was short lived, and this is not helping. <laughs> You're not helping if you bring out this like this. So this got to be work in progress, you know. But yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, another big discrepancy between yeah the toy line and cartoon is stack and attack mm -hmm. this was how the toys were marketed stack and attack um although the only media version of it you see in that little uh comic which was included in the he-man uh, magazine mm. and where did they actually stack all four items on top of each other all four vehicles because mm. you can actually only stack two of them and always armed force needs to be at the bottom oh uh, oh. They tried to force <laughs> Fetus into the cartoon, uh, or at least they used the name, Stack and Attack. Hey, kid, wait a minute. Let me have your freeze ray before you go. One freeze ray for Stack and Attack coming up. Got it. Hey, kid, give me the skid gun. I hope they like the ski. Skid gun for Stack and Attack, right now. Have drill sergeant special laser for this. Stack and attack. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> that makes more sense than uh, the stack and attack of uh, just uh, shooting uh, uh, weapons from one vehicle to the other vehicle. <laughs> even in the second clip, it didn't get even get actually on the vehicle. It went into a small compartment in the uh, drill sergeant. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, big discrepancies between the the toy and the cartoon line. But the, I there love is, There is, as a kid, did I mind? <laughs> no, sir. I loved it. I, I was taking it. <laughs> Yeah, the, the biggest shame is yeah, it got cancelled. So we still don't know if Jace will ever meet his father. 
Uh, if it the is. roots will ever be combined. It is. If... It's, it's, that, it's that Dungeons and Dragons thing, you know. Uh, in every episode of Dungeons and Dragons, the kids try to find their way home back to. And with Jace, every episode he tries to find and be reunited with his father, and that never happens. And there is talk that they were going to do a movie so that the whole series would ca ca come to a conclusion. But, you know, that never happened because it was cancelled because it, it didn't do so well. Which is a shame. Think of what this series could have been. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, yeah, but Dungeons and Dragons, they did have an ending, right? There is uh, this unofficial episode that was put together by fans, I believe, which is the final episode indeed, but it, it's not in the series. Uh, there is this last episode in Dungeons and Dragons where they make it home, but then decide yeah. to, oh no, we know we have to go back because Fenger is threatening everything. What are we going to choose? Uh, home or, you know, uh, battle Fenger and save the world of Dungeons and Dragons and they go back into the world. So they, in the end, they never made it home. But there is this lost episode that's on YouTube, I believe. But that's Dungeons and Dragons, and that's probably a different Crazy Dutchies episode for the future. Who knows? <laughs> but yeah, if somebody yeah. wants to come on to the episode, uh, the link is in uh, the chat. Uh, and uh, yeah, join and talk about memories if you have any, <laughs> or if you want to ask some questions online uh, about Jason the World Wars, feel free to drop on. But yeah, definitely, as you stated uh, at the uh, the start of this uh, this live stream, this show, this property is such an underdog. Mm. Uh, it really is such an underdog. Like I said, the app, the, the cartoon got cancelled, the toilet got cancelled. Uh, look at the prototypes we saw in the stream. What well, well, what should have been possible. Even in digital media, mm -hmm. um, luckily you can find them on uh, on YouTube. Yeah, <laughs> good one, Mike. Apparently, Michael Saber is very afraid of uh, fair rides. <laughs> but yeah, even even finding digital photos or finding something like this, uh, there's I found two T-shirts online and. Mm -hmm. Neither of them had proper logos. Um, I actually had to find this logo from somewhere on digital media and actually had to brush up the quality a lot and then make my own T-shirt. Mm. It's such an underdog property and it's such a shame because it's such a cool cartoon with such a great intro. Yeah, that, that raises the question because it was such an underdog and, and you and I, as we got to know each other, love a lot of those underdog lines like starcom for for to mention one that's one of those other underdog lines yeah awesome <laughs> um does that ad or uh, that show now when you look back on it has a certain charm because it was such an underdog and such a short-lived thing in the 80s uh i still love to watch the show um maybe yeah, like I said, I'm a big vehicle guy, and the, the vehicles, the design of the vehicles, and especially in the cartoon, they're, they're just amazing. Uh, as an adult, um, I can't watch every episode anymore, because mm -hmm. um, even though the sound, the music was great, uh, um, the way it was drawn is great, mm -hmm. the story writing is not always amazing. So <clears throat> not, every, not every episode is... Uh, of equal value. Uh, I uh, when I actually finished watching all well watching all sixty five. I I did skip a few episodes off. Mm. I just uh, yeah. I I watched all of them <laughs> very recently. Well, I, I, and, when yeah. I was watching them, it's because it's a lot of magic, and I was like, what goes with magic? The dragons, but there's no dragons in the episode. But wait until the. Not the final episode, but the one before that. We finally, I finally got my dragon. <laughs> yeah, very cool, very cool. So you have a few of those toys yourself. Uh, uh, I have, uh, I have two of them in the house, but uh, I've got, um, I've got the uh, almost the collection complete. I don't wow. have the two walkers, but I got Battle Base. Mm -hmm. uh, I got all four Monster Mines. 
and I got all four of the uh, the lightning league vehicles. Cool. That's how long did that did that take for you to collect that almost complete set of toys? Um, well, it started after I saw the uh, episodes on retro blasting over Jason the Real <laughs> Warriors. Um, I actually because that helped a lot to identify which part became to which part and if they actually were complete on eBay. Mm -hmm. um, it, but overall, besides battle base, getting the eight vehicles, it, it didn't take me more than two months. Definitely not. Uh, yeah. still read it kind of readily available on eBay. It, it just, if you're a completist, getting them complete, yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely. Try not yeah. to give up on that. Yeah, uh, you're, you're welcome to use the link that we put in the in the chat to come live on the show, if you like, Sonny, and chat a bit. So uh, don't know if you can, where's the link again? Can we post it again? Because it's fallen a bit back. Or can you do that, Jody? Uh, if you, if you want to come, uh onto the stream and talk uh, about your favorite uh, memories i'll post a link into the comment fields yeah so that's what we mean that's something we did uh, from the first uh, live stream we did right jody so at the end of it we were like you know if people in the chat like to come on the show live and uh, you know chat with us that that's what and that's yeah that was great fun. The first time we had Grind had, had Jim on, which we didn't know before, and now, now we're good friends. So that's it's a great way to know you to chat with us and uh, share some of the memories. But yeah, what's the best bit of advice that you can give people watching this right now if they want to start into this franchise? What, what, what would they go for? What would they do? Uh, yeah, definitely go on to YouTube, watch the cartoons. Um, they're all there. They're in 480p. Um, if you want to collect the toys, yeah, don't be a completist. Um, try to find the way, the look they feel. Research a bit. Look images on up online. Mm -hmm. uh, there, uh, there's even on Transformerland. There's an entire database. And decide which do you want them bare bones. Like I have my soul boss, so my mm -hmm. soul boss is pretty bare bones. Mm -hmm. uh, or do you want it complete? Or do you want to have it more cartoon accurate? Yeah, mix and match. Uh, make up your mind. Uh, do do you want to have the figures included? So do you want the little green blob? <laughs> and do you want the little brown boring figures with them? <laughs> So yeah, that's my advice. Uh, don't be a completist, because if you're a completist and want to get everything complete, yeah, good luck with that, buddy. That that is that is yeah. So yeah, that's all I got for for Wheeled Warriors as far as my end. Is there anything you like to uh, add to this, Jody? Because uh, I think we no, covered I most think, of it. Uh, we've covered the toy lines. Uh, we covered the cartoon in depth. Um, we covered the discrepancies. Um, again, if you want to learn even more about the discrepancies between the two, we, uh, I can personally definitely recommend Record Retro Blessing. He did a great review of the cartoon and the toys, and especially his survival guide video. Mm -hmm. If you do want to get them things complete, uh, his survival guide is one of the best resources to actually make your Wild Warriors uh, uh, collection complete. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, yeah, I think we're gonna because there's nobody in the green room waiting wants to come on the chat i think we're going to draw to a close then on this episode since we're approaching the one and a half hour as well um jody i think this is the moment where we uh, where i ask you is where can people find you and do you have anything cool coming up in the near future on your channel gen x toys geek yeah, so uh, I'm, of course, here on YouTube. Uh, otherwise, you wouldn't be here. Uh, you can find me on Facebook. You can find me on Twitter. Um, you can find me on LinkedIn. Um, Chris is on. Where can we find you, Chris? Well, you, well I'm going to chat. We got somebody in the, in the green room, so I'm going to answer that question oh. in a moment. We got Sonny Frisch, Stephen, and here he is live on the show. <laughs> Hello, good sir. <laughs> My God. <laughs> Hi guys. Hey, Hello. How are you? Um, I'm quite well, actually. A bit late, though. I have early tomorrow, but I think I can manage. 
<laughs> I, w I didn't want to miss your show. I actually missed the first 15 minutes or 20 minutes, but yeah. So I, I don't know if I have an explicit, you know, scene, uh, which I remember of the show, which I like most or something, but it's also why back since I seen it last, but I remember, um, I, I watched it in the early nineties. So it wasn't on German television at all. Mm. Okay. So, uh, my parents back in the day, they installed satellite television in 1990. And then I had access to British television, which I hadn't be uh, before. Mm. And it was interesting. So um, I saw the, the the show, I saw the intro. So I'm not familiar with that, you know, always like Masters of Universe, Thundercats, although we didn't have the toys in Germany, only the show. Um, but there was something brand new. And then when I was like in a toy shop, I mm -hmm. always saw these uh, flexi track toys, you know, with those, um, you had those little cars and those yeah, um, yeah. tracks you could build and which are, which you can form like you wanted. And I thought, is it maybe, you know, is it maybe a, is it a toy line or made for that stuff? Is it, I always look because they had something like monsters and, and, and dinosaurs and stuff, but never chased in the real world. So I thought that was something for that, but never, mm. never happened. <laughs> It's cool you mentioned that because you mentioned it and something sparks up here from, oh, yeah, we had that over here in the Netherlands, too. That, but I don't know what they were called, but I remember them. Definitely. Yeah. So awesome. Maybe they have gone for that. Maybe combining Flexitrack and uh, Jason, the real voice. Also, when you see the intro, the first mm -hmm. shot, you know, when, when, when they are, when you see those laser beams and everything and they're chasing each other. So mm -hmm. that looks like they are on like very narrow roads, like those flexi tracks. Yeah, that would make a great okay, play nice. set that, that uh, <laughs> yeah. Or was it magical? <laughs> <laughs> it was for me and it still is there. There's still magic in, in this franchise and, and yeah, it's still up there in my top 10 of 80s franchises, maybe in my top five, maybe because of the strong intro song and the music during the cartoon as well. Still yeah. enjoy that. I mean, he also performed for a uh, mask, the soundtrack. That was yeah. very, really, he worked with Shuki Levy or I yeah. think it's Shuki, it's Shuki Levy and Haim Saban from, uh, from, uh, Israel. Yeah. But, um, Shuki Levy, I, I think he also did Master of Universe, the soundtrack and TNA of He-Man. I think he was very involved in the scene at that time. Yes, they yeah, yeah. make some really, really great soundtracks. Like uh, this one, Mask, definitely Mask. Uh, also, one of my favorite soundtracks. So yeah, definitely Inspector great work. Gadget. Uh, they did the Power Rangers in the in the late eighties, early nineties. That was, I believe, and then three is Power Rangers. Ring Raiders. So yeah. many. <laughs> Though that Heim Saban took that from Japan. They they had uh, first, I think that was um, Mask Rider, uh, the Kamen Rider. And mm -hmm. they had this um, other these um, five rangers, and then he came to Toy Company, Toy as uh, T O E I, and yeah. then he did a joint venture with them, and then created the Power Rangers. Awesome, great memories, yeah. But there's some love for the Wild Warriors then, uh, as I listen to you. <laughs> that the saw boss. It also reminds me of Pizza Cutter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was you with the yeah. comments uh, from uh, somebody commented before from a hey, Pizza Cutter. But yeah, I suppose you can uh, you can try. Uh, that would make an original Pizza Cutter. <laughs> I wonder though um, that you know it's, nowadays it's the discrepancy between you know creating bigger figures and um, play sets or, or vehicles get too expensive. Mm -hmm. But you know, um, maybe a toy line where actually the vehicles are in the center and not the figures itself might have some success again. So I wonder yeah. why they try. Yeah, the, 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 that's definitely with also with mask because yeah, mask. Although the characters were really strong with mask, the vehicles were like the main core of mask. Uh, yeah, uh, they were a lot bigger than these little guys. <laughs> they still were they still were but in my mind if 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 wild warriors toy line would have gone with the mask concept of making the figures the same size as a mask figure the toys needed to be just a little bit bigger i suppose but not that enormous much we're not talking gi joe size action figure here we're talking mask action figure so 
that would have worked even more for me but still as a kid having my 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 gun grinner i, I didn't care that it didn't transform into this monstroid uh, I didn't care that I did have the other figure. I had that vehicle. I watched the cartoon. Watching that cartoon, I had the, the toy with me. I remember that as well. And yeah, just enjoying the magic, you know. As a kid, you look differently at these than I suppose from uh, from the point of age where we are right now. Yeah. Did we have another guest in the green room uh, waiting, Jody? No, but, uh, no it's just even... Oh, okay. Awesome. Yeah. Is there anything else you like to add or share in in terms of memory, uh, Stephen? <laughs> no, I, th I think I I, I don't want to have um, I don't want to steal too much of your time. So. No problem, sir. No problem. So maybe you want to go on with the show, and uh, I enjoy uh, watching. But thank you for having an ear, and um, yeah. Um, totally, our pleasure. Vielen Dank. Danke schön. Okay. Danke macht sehr, Steven. Tschüss. A good day to see <laughs> That's cool. cool. That, uh, that takes us at the one and a half hours mark, uh, Chris. So. Uh, yeah. Uh, where can people find me? Was the last question you asked me, and uh, where well, you can find me together with uh, Jeff Barker and Scuba Pete on the Chasing 80s Toys YouTube channel, and we also have our social media on Instagram. So. Uh, Happy to follow, and Jody and I work together uh, since we're both Dutch, and we're both crazy about these franchises from the 80s, henceforth the crazy Dutch, and we uh, skip over from one channel to another one. So the next live stream will probably will be on the Chasing 80s Toys channel, and the other one after that, we skip back to Jody, you know, and that way helping each other, getting some audience in, and helping our channel to, you know, grow into this awesome community we love. But a big thanks to everybody in the stream who showed up uh, uh i see guests jumping in here and 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 uh george aiken brandon haiti a scuba so much of our friends turned up again and i feel so humbled every time you guys do that you know so uh, i hope it was interesting for everyone and we learned uh could have learned you a bit about uh, the franchise uh, if you didn't know already well, I think it is definitely for some people that uh, learn something about the franchise. And uh, hopefully we spread the love and uh, hopefully that some people will uh, jump onto YouTube uh, later today and go watch some Jason Wheel Warriors. Yes, lightning oh, strikes. Right. <laughs> lightning strikes. See ya.